What's up, what's up? It's your boy Hotshot coming back with another video. If you're in the trucking, if you want to make make money in trucking, be profitable, make sure you hit the, the subscribe button to get notified when we drop bombs like this. We are gonna do a lot of trucking news from now on. We're gonna we're gonna try to be into the news. Uh, I know a lot of people over the road they don't get to watch this kind of stuff. So I'm going to be giving you the info that will hinder or help your trucking business. It will, you will be able to make moves knowing what's coming. Today is a big one. I made a video the other day about how everything was crunching. Like the economy is getting tight, you know, and people are like, Oh, you're crazy. It's going $5 a gallon. It's going to be ruined anyway. Well... The sad truth is, money has not been back since 1971. It just hasn't. We've had 2,000% inflation. And until the government gives up on this whole money scheme, scam they're doing, whatever, they're going to keep printing it. It is what it is, you know? So they're going to keep printing it to keep us alive, and the dollar's going to mean nothing. So it's going to get even tighter. And this may, this may be the cause that actually give us, gives us a little dip. Um, it may put some people out of business. Um, it may strengthen some people. Uh, because as I said, we're, um, we have already have ships sitting off, offshore, right? We have ships sitting out there that cannot get, get uh, to, to the port. The, the whole global trade is, it, it's kind of like, it's really, really tight. And uh, it, it's, it's moving really slow. And it takes so long to get, say, from China to over here. But everything's done by ship. Well, right now, we have a ship blocking the main artery around the globe around the globe the suez canal right now is blocked by a ship that somehow made a right turn on a straight road the ship is wider than the canal so the right now the ship is on land on both sides so they got to dig it out they're talking about may 31st um, and I was reading earlier, like, there's another way around. Takes them an extra week, seven days to go around. So you're adding seven days to an already month-long trip. So if you're waiting on something from China or from Asia, anywhere over there, it's going to be longer. That's trailer parts. That's car parts, truck parts, electronics. We are... Depending on so many imports right now, this is where we're at. So I'm going to read a little bit of the article. Um, then I'm going to give you some more of my, um, my thought process. So it says, Block Suez Canal compound stress to supply chains. Dislodging the container vessel blocking the Suez Canal will take until at least March 31st. A longer effort than initially feared that will amplify the disruption of global supply chains for everything from oil to grain to cars. Believe it or not, we even get beef from overseas. Um, the extended halt to traffic through one of the world's most important waterways is stretching a container shipping industry that's already operating at full capacity. It threatens costly delays for European companies that rely on a steady flow of Asia imports and for co consumers who have grown fond of fast online purchases during the pandemic. And a lot of that stuff you order comes from online. I had a, um, like I I've even noticed and my buddy has too, even if it says made in America, it's not made in America anymore. It still comes from China at times. So, they're, they're playing on our on our psyche now so um 
It says the task of refloating the 200,000 ton ship called the Ever Given, which still is firmly wedged across a vital maritime trade route, will require about a week of work and potentially longer. Said people familiar with the matter who asked to not be identified. Now that part there kind of worries me. Um, if you're talking about something, but you don't want to be identified, now, there's two ways it could go there. You either A, don't know what you're talking about, or B, you're so tight into that that you're not supposed to be talking. Let's hope it's the latter of the two, but you never know. Um, the delays are likely to increase costs, adding to already widespread inflationary pressure on supply chains, said Chris Rogers. Lead trade analyst for SP Global. Uh, the short-term ripple effects will be an increased potential for stockouts in consumer goods and the risk that just-in-time manufacturing supply chains that had already been roiled by Brexit and commodity shortage may face further interruptions. Even before the Ever Given ran aground in the Suez Canal on March 23rd, the global trade network already was showing signs of strain due to the year-long economic disruption of the coronavirus pandemic. The world's biggest flow of merchandise between China and the U.S. has faced nearly five months of bottlenecks at the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. Importers have been waiting several weeks for arriving cargo with the knock-on effect that exporters are unable to secure empty steel boxes needed to deliver the shipments abroad. So the fear is now that the Suez incident will exacerbate Europeans' logistical challenge, resulting in canceled sailings, container shortages, and higher freight rates. Like, if we have all these containers over here, because we can't get it out of the port long enough. We can't get it off the ship quick enough. I mean, quick enough. If everything's piling up over here, they can't send us nothing. You know, I'm, I mean, I guess you can just make them, but I really don't think you just make them like that, you know? Um, and we're talking about, I, I don't know, these things probably hold, hold 500,000, 2,000. I have no clue, but it's a lot. So let's just say, um, you're out of them and you want somebody to, to make them so you can run your shipments, how long is it going to take to make one ship's worth? It's a lot. Um, since March 23rd, they've been um, trying to tug and dig it out, equipment that's tiny in comparison with a 400 meter, 1300 foot vessel. Um, should cargo need to be unloaded from the stranded vessel or extensive repairs made to the canal itself, then the downtime could certainly last at least two weeks, according to Randy Given, Senior Vice President of Equity Research for Energy Maritime and Jeffers, Jeffries LLC. The Ever Given could hold almost $1 billion of goods. You know how much product that's holding up? that me and you are probably waiting on. Um, vessels that have been scheduled to traverse the Suez Canal are beginning costly and time-consuming detours around Africa as the shipping sector scrambles to keep deliveries moving. Um, the HMM company from South Korea instructed a container ship that departed the UK on March 22nd to divert around the Cape of Good Hope to avoid the gridlock. At least seven liquefied natural gas vessels have had routes adjusted away from the canal. Um, shipping costs are also surging. The price to ship a 40 foot container from China to Europe has almost quadrupled from a year ago, adding a new burden to global supply chains already reeling from the pandemic that has owed havoc with shortage and delays. The ca canal blockage is currently holding up about 2 million barrels a day of oil flows, according to Brimmar uh, estimates. Um,
So you've got a list of cargo abroad the HMM company vessel waiting outside the canal to return to Asia gives an indication of the sweep of industries caught up in this disruption. With goods on board including the wood, machinery, frozen beef, paper, powdered milk, furniture, beer, frozen pork, auto components, chocolate, and cosmetics. Everything. Caterpillar Inc., the largest U.S. machinery producer, said it is facing shipment delays and even considering airlifting products if necessary, while Japan's Envision AESC, a supplier of electric vehicle batteries, says it relies on the Suez Canal for some important electro. So, guys, it, and there's a little bit more here. I'll put it in. The, I'll put a link in the description. But here's the moral of the story. This disruption is going to hurt everybody. Um, now, I don't know if you heard that correctly, but let me reiterate. So, in the last year, container companies, these shipping companies, have quadrupled their price because they know their value. They know they're stretched. Why haven't we quadrupled or even doubled our price? Now you could say, oh, a hot shot, it was a dollar twenty a mile, now it's two fifty now. It should have never been a dollar twenty in the first place. So you can't compare an increase to a below market average. Like a dollar twenty should never exist. I mean, I, I'll bet money. If you go offer them to move that for 25% of their rate, they're going to laugh at you. Let it sit. Why aren't we doing that? Some of us are. Some of us do. <clears throat> but it, it's... We have got to be in tune with what's going on. You've got to pay attention to the world around you. I got to... I had to get um, um, solenoids for my truck. I just bought two solenoids. I'm getting ready to put them on. My freight charge for two solenoids this big, if I have a picture, I'll post it up here, $30. $30 was my freight charge for two solenoids. But yet, you want me to take a whole load for what, a dollar a mile? Come on. Like, the, the shipping industry is at a breaking point, and we know that. The shipping, whether it's trucking, whether it's containers, whether it's air, everything is at a breaking point of capacity. That's why rates are up. That's why you can't get, um, you can't get equipment. Equipment prices are through the roof. And look around. How many mega, car mega carriers do you see compared to last year? Not many. Don't know why. Probably because the people don't want to work for fuck or for three hundred dollars, six hundred dollars a week. But um, so, guys, this could um, hurt us in the short term. But when this finally gets fixed, when they finally find a way to get these ships in, um, and what I think they're going to probably end up doing is instead of, they'll probably end up diverting them this way uh, because i know like if if the when the cars are coming in if baltimore's full they'll send them up the coast somewhere they don't they usually don't have them sitting offshore this just tells you how much is sitting and waiting so if they're going to have to try to find another port to send these ships to they cannot keep having these ships off coast because I will bet money these ships detention pay is not $40 an hour with a three hour maximum it ain't guaranteed you can't get my ship unloaded you pay you know and the the ships are no different than the trucks except there's a lot less companies and they've got CEOs with more of a backbone than some trucking company CEOs or owner operators or you know so guys um be 
keep your eye out. Um, I know what I said the other day, but now obviously it's changed. It might be time, like you, you might see a little slow dip coming to where it might be worth it just to go home, take a little break with the family and watch the market. Don't be out here running a dollar, dollar fifty a mile freight. Park the truck, get your maintenance ready, get your truck in order, and get ready for the big push. Because it will come. It has to come. They are not gonna dump all them products in the sh in the in the sea. They're not gonna stop sending them because they can't. This has to be resolved, and it will be resolved. It's only a matter of time. When it's resolved, will you be ready? That's the biggest thing. So, um, ooh, ooh, we got good news. We're in the profit. So, um, all right, guys. So that's it for today. If you guys like this trucking news, let me know in the comments. I enjoy making it. Let me know if you enjoy receiving it. Um, if it really helps you while you're on the road and with your business. So if you do, please like the comment or like the video. Um, there's something that I want to do as a community. I'm going to need your help because I have had enough of what's going on. Um, but we will do another video about that. I'm going to ask for you guys' help and I'm going to need it big time. So, but for now, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you want more of it, subscribe. Uh, make sure you turn the notifications on. Like, share, subscribe. Hit that ding ding. And I will see you tomorrow. Peace.